with us now are Tony Holt Kramer and Fred Williamson. I'm in the company of two movie stars. This is unbelievable. So well, everybody needs a job doing something. So you know, <laughs> you, you find we something. We just thought it was an yes. easier way you to make a living. You find something that you're good at, and, and you keep it up until they kick you out. Tony, I saw this man back in movies called uh, Black Caesar yeah. and Steel. That's right. Steel's Law back in the day, yeah. And very unfortunately, I have to confess, I was not cast as one of the goons in these movies. Well, actually, you know, Fred doesn't tolerate goons. You know, he <laughs> no. has a very limited no. appreciation. No, no. So with him, you got to move quickly. You got to get it. You got to talk about it. You got to yes. get it going. We and that's the way her. he is. I directed a show. And with her. I want to tell you, he directed our show, Ruta yes. and May. Yes. Uh, when we did. It was a lot of fun. Show. Right. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Tell you, we were good. We were yeah, good, were, weren't we? Right. You kept talking. It was good. You were. <laughs> <laughs> Ruta, all he did was talk. It was good. Yeah. The tour bus stops here. Yeah. Ruta Lee, Tony Holt, directed by Fred Williamson. Yeah. So he knows his way in front and behind a camera. He also knows his way on a political stage because uh, you campaigned yeah, for the well, president. You know, I mean, uh, you, you pick and choose. And I chose Donald. Excuse me. I chose President Trump. There you go. Yes. Um, you know... Why not pick the best of the of the group? You know that was the way I did it. I sorted it out by who was who was saying the things that I wanted to hear, and also who was saying the things that would listen to me. And I think he's doing a pretty good job. How unfortunate it is! I'm sorry to interrupt you, but how unfortunate that society has become so ridiculously divisive, such intensity. Yes, but you know, it's going to come back because people are going to look at it. I think and say, the world is going to hell. There's no reasoning, I mean, behind what they say and how they treat the President Trump. There's no definite reasoning behind it except ignorance. I mean, when something is in front of you and something is happening and positive in front of you, how can you be ignorant and say, we don't want that, we don't like that? It's ignorance. It has nothing to do with race, it has nothing to do with color. It's ignorance. And ignorance is such a dangerous thing in our modern world. Because True. you can't. You can't define ignorance. You can't have somebody explain why they are ignorant. So there is no explanation for it. But I'll show you something, and Fred can attest to it, because he was our very first Trumpster. I mentioned that Trumpet USA started out just girls, and within moments, hours, I said to Fred, you've got to be our head Trumpster. And he went, I'm in. And you know, he was at the first two events we did celebrating Trump. They needed a brother up front, you know. That's <laughs> it. They needed a brother to solidify and combat the ignorance out there of what he's, they're saying he's not doing. I mean, nobody is giving him credit for what he's doing. Just give him credit for what he's doing. Don't be so negative. Negative is, is a killer in anything, even in a movie business. In this business, political business, being negative is a killer because it takes away your thought of reasonable. Reasonable right. thought. Right. And all the nitpicking. We see that. We see that all the time. And people that get like that get less and less appreciation of life, don't they? Yes. And screaming doesn't win. Screamers don't win. You know? Just look at the results. That's all you ask somebody to do. Look at the results. You don't like the results, then I'll listen to you. But if you tell me you don't like his, his tactics and what he does and the way he, how he does it, the man has street knowledge. He doesn't have bourgeois, bourgeois uh, political knowledge. He has street knowledge. He knows how to talk to somebody to get him to, to listen to what he has to say. He's good at that. He's a, he's a great street fighter. You know? Oh, the best. He is the best. He's a street fighter. Yep. But it, that, that, listen, that's what it takes. Yes. You know, for all the years of pandering and people collecting after they finish working, collecting for the rest of their life, you do one day in Congress, you have a pension for the rest of your life. Uh, he it's doesn't kind of even ridiculous. take a salary. He doesn't even take it. Walk softly and carry a big stick. That's the motto. <laughs> Walk softly and carry a big stick. Interesting. You, you can have... see Fred, by the way. Fred is going to be, we're going to have a kickoff football. You know, Fred was a big football player and da -da. football star. Yeah, da -da. yeah. Da -da. Super Bowl one, yes. Yeah. Super Bowl one. Yeah. And uh, you're having an event in uh, January, February, February 1st, 2020, and as the official kickoff. Well, so you can have a lot of has-been jocks there. Used to be was-been, washed-up, <laughs> used-up jocks there, and uh, I'm one of them. So 
Oh, no. We're I'll be happy to see you. We're all relevant. Everyone who is there is relevant. I'll be happy to see somebody's And desk. we're always sold out, right, within 20 minutes. Yes. And it's at Mar-a-Lago. Yes. And we're going to have a very sporty crowd. And you're going to bust in some black folks this time. For sure. Because <laughs> every time I For get up sure. there, the first thing I say is, where are the black people? That's right. We gotta, always have, well, gotta, we always have black gotta, people. You don't have enough. You got to bring some well, more in because hey, they're out, they're out there. Know, they're, they come fight. on over. They're fighting for us. They're saying the same things that we're sitting here saying. They need to be seen. They need Invite to be heard. Invite some of your friends to come. They need to be. Get Invite. in mar lago They probably couldn't get in mar lago you always got into more. I say me. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the other well, people. Well, no one can get in black, white, yellow, green. If you don't have a membership or you're not with a member, you can't get in. It's, well, not, it's ridiculous. It people should be, sorry for interrupting you, Rudy, but people should be judged on the merits of who they are, not uh, their heritage or skin color. It's totally ridiculous. We're we have a talented man here. No. We have a, uh, a talented lady right here. Who cares where you were born? We're, you not in that, we're not at that place. We're not at that point right now. We're no. not there. We're not there. I became uh, active, became famous doing my own thing. Uh, my motivation was everybody to tell me something that I can't do. Every yes. no that I got in my life was a motivation. Being black is an automatic motivation. I'm motivated every day because <laughs> I'm always said, doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. <laughs> you said you were born having to prove yourself. Yes, exactly. I'm born proving myself and I love it. I had to be faster than somebody, quicker than somebody, tougher than somebody, smarter than somebody. That's great. It keeps me on my toes, and you can't ever sneak up on me because I expect you to be coming. <laughs> and you That's jolly true. well are. And I'm just thinking about Sammy Davis Jr. with Tony right behind you. Yes. And he wrote a book called Yes, I Can yes. years ago. And uh, I'm so impressed with all that you both do. Tony just wrote this book, and uh, as you know. Well, so being a female, you know, she had a lot of things that she had to overcome and fight. You know, not supposed That's to be, right. be head of this company or, or, or be president of this or do that. And because also, you're a woman. Yeah. if you're not born yes. with a silver spoon in your mouth, which you weren't and I wasn't. Oh, no. Uh, it takes a lot more work no. and a lot harder. We had plastic and then, spoons. <laughs> and also, you know, in the days when Fred really became a star and a football player and then an actor, and I became a television yes, columnist yes. and an interviewer. It wasn't like today where, you know, they have schools for everybody. Yeah. You come out of the school, you are completely learned. Yeah, we learned the hard way. We worked. We get judged, too, more critically than anybody else, being a black man, being a female. We get judged more critically. So we have to be careful and sharp about what we do. And when we have to stand for, what, for something and stand for what we say and stand behind what we say. And that's what we do. Mm -hmm. So you have to excel in order to overcome discrimination. Isn't that sad? I don't want to overcome it. I, that's not I, my I goal. No. It's overcome. No, my goal is not to overcome it. My goal is to let them watch me see what I'm doing. As a role model. And, it, and, and motivate other people to do the same thing. I'm not trying. It's like, you know, my motto in my book, Unstoppable Me, says, if you think it, you can do it, which is really what Fred's saying. Yeah. Precisely, yeah. You, you, know. you don't want to overcome because in able to overcome, you have to convince them. You don't want to convince them. You, if, that, if you want to be you and you want to be how you are, fine. That's okay. As long as you don't get in my way, physically or mentally, then you and I can get along. We can talk. We can sit around the table. You can tell me your side of your, your story, and I can tell you my side, and we can go have a drink and have fun. You know? And here we are today, and I really believe you're both at a peak of success and energy, the two of you, actually. We're relevant. It takes energy. <laughs> dude. It takes energy. I mean... It, our battle scars don't show, but uh, That's right. we're covered with them. That's right. We really do have <laughs> scars. I mean, don't look at our backs. We're covered with them. We're covered with them. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you know, the, the, it was wonderful having the experiences yeah. that we had. Yeah. I think we are so far ahead of a lot of people that were just, that never had the opportunity to have to work as hard, fight as hard, do as much, overcome. You know, when I, when I, I'm a graduate from Northwestern University, architecture and engineering. Uh, when I, I was number two draft choice to the 49ers, and I had a very prolific athletic career at Northwestern. So when I went to 49ers, uh, I went as a all-American flanker back, a guy who catches the ball. First day in practice, they make me a defensive back. They give me a red shirt. I says, why is it, why are you giving me a red shirt? Does it mean I'm, I'm, I'm special? He says, no, son, you're not special. You have to play defense. I said, what do you mean play defense? Don't you know who I am? 
I can catch the ball in my teeth, between my eyes, anywhere. <laughs> I don't know how to run backwards. They says, well, if you're going to make this team, son, you're going to have to learn how to run backwards. So after two weeks of practicing, I'm falling down. I'm tripping on my feet. I can't cover anybody because I don't know how to run backwards. So this is Coach Hickey. He comes to me and he says, He spent too much of his life trying yes. to go forward. <laughs> comes to me and he says, son, you disappointed us. You can't make the transition. We thought you were a great athlete and you could make the transition. And if you don't do something in the next few days, we're going to have to cut you and send you home. I send me home. I'm going to go back to the ghetto, tell the boys that I can't make a little poot butt football team. I'm the baddest guy in the neighborhood. I can't make a football team. Are you crazy? So I go back at night and I'm thinking, what can I do? What can I do? So I said, look, I'm 220 pounds. I'm the fastest guy on the team. Why should I have to cover anybody? I'm just going to get in front of your face and knock you down. <laughs> First victim come out was R.C. Owens. Victim. R.C. <laughs> Owens. He's, and I'm like two feet away from him. I'm breathing. I could tell you what he had for breakfast. Coach Hickey says, Williamson, get back. I says, hell with you. I'm standing right here. He said to R.C., go ahead and make him look stupid. R.C. made a move, and I give him this. Bang! Knocked him out. Red Hickey runs over and says, God damn it, Williamson, what are you doing? I said, I covered him. <laughs> he says, well, get back and stop hammering my players. Is that how you got the name That's Hammer? That's how I got the name. I want you to know that. I've only stop known him for Stop hammering years. my players. So I became wow. the Hammer. The Hammer. I wanted to ask you that. I gave him this shot right here. Huh. That was well, it. We're going to give ourselves a shot right now because well, we've got some other people in the room that want to say hello. And uh, thank you, Mr. Williamson. No, it's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure. His wife, Linda, was also one of our, and still is, one of our foremost trumpets. Well, this is absolutely a wonderful experience. And all I can say to you, Tony, and to you, my friend, is I'm going to infiltrate the set of your next movie and fight my way into a position as one of your next goons. My next movie is in Spain. I'm making a Western with uh, my director called Enzo Castellari. We did a film called Inglorious Bastards, so I'm off to Spain in a couple of months. When is that? Wow. In uh, September, October, I'm going to well, I guess probably. we're all going to have to visit going to you. Spain. But after Spain, we go to Rome to make another movie in Rome with uh, Franco Nero, so. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. Things are moving, things are happening. Things are moving, you see? Yeah. Don't believe this thing about age. I mean, this kid is just getting started. I, mean, I know him. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tony. Oh, Lovely you're so to have welcome. You here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. A real pleasure. Yes. Thank you. I want to thank you, and I want to thank you so much, too, uh, for coming to my book signing party at Villa Paradiso here in Palm Springs. Yeah, heard about it. And that's why we're all here today. So thank you.